Everyone hails the trifecta of the P1, LaFerrari, and 918 as the Holy Trinity. And although that may be the case, they weren't the first. Fall back to the late 90s and the automotive world had the privilege to enjoy the competition between McLaren, Mercedes, and Porsche on the track. Our prize car comes from the Stallions of Stuttgart. Not only is it Porsche's predecessor to the legendary 962, but it's also shots fired to McLaren's F1 GTR and later Mercedes's CLK GTR. Life for the 911 GT1 race car didn't particularly start as a success to Porsche's incredibly high standards. To give you an image of how high their expectations were, the 911 GT1 race car finished first and second in its class, but only second and third overall during the 1966 campaign at Le Mans. In the months that followed, Porsche continued tempering with their Golden Boy by introducing a carbon fiber chassis, which is basically a car version of going keto. Of course, German hard work and engineering almost always tend to pay off, and it was no exception in this case, as the GT1 race car finished first and second overall in the 1998 24-hour at Le Mans after the overhaul. Incredibly, however, the Porsche was also slower than the Mercedes CLK GTR, but it was due to its outstanding reliability, which proved to be the cutting edge on race day. That being said, problems the CLK GTR face, such as oil pump issues and gearbox malfunctions, don't occur in top drives, so Porsche's reliability isn't going to translate to any added success in the game. Despite that, however, the car still boasts respectable stats, with 95 handling, a top speed of 205 miles per hour, and accelerating to 60 in 3.1 seconds with an MRA of 102. On top of this, the 911 GT1 race car is the best 90s German in the game, and the 4th best 90s rear wheel drive car in general in the game. So introducing your next prize car, the 1998 Le Mans reigning champ, the Porsche 911 GT1 race car. Yo guys, what is going on? Blossom is back and welcome back to another episode of Top Drives. And of course, I hope you enjoyed the autobiography for the Porsche 911 GT1 race car. This is the next prize car that is upon us and I'm really happy that the tri series are coming back because if you guys don't know, my track record with GT series is absolutely atrocious. I think we've had six GT series. I've won one which means that I have a win percentage of under 20% when you think about it. Citroen GT, I didn't win it. Uh, Ford GT, I didn't win it. Veneno, I didn't win it. The El Rouge, I did not win that either. And the only one I won was the 905B. I might be missing one more GT series somewhere down the line, but I'm really happy that the Tri-Series are coming back. So the Porsche 911 GT1 race car, man. Really excited for this. Like I said in the autobiography, this is the best German 90s car in the game. As you can see, Top Dog 92. It's the only 90 plus, you know, German 90s car as well. And if you want to take away Germany and we just go straight to 1990s like I said it is the fourth best rear wheel drive now that is only so I can sound you know statistically and literally correct but in my humble opinion I think the Porsche 911 GT1 race car is actually just the fourth best 90s car in general in the game because the Bentley on Odier is a bit of a joke really so yeah really excited for this to come back when you think about it it's just a slightly better version of the Dodge Viper GTSR they handle about the same well they do handle the same and the 0 to 60 difference is only by 0 0.1. The Dodge Viper GTSR and the 911 GT1 race car, according to Top Drives Club, have about the same MRI. So really, the only difference here is that 0 0.1, 0 to 60, and that 5 top speed. But hey, in these kind of situations, that's all you need to be a better car in every racetrack against your competitor. So really excited for the 911 GT1 race car, and I can't wait to try and win this one, because I didn't try with the El Rouge at all. <laughs> 
<laughs> but anyway, let's jump into it. We do have the Porsche 911 GT1 qualifiers, and here are the prizes that we got. We have a Subaru Impreza, Subaru XV, Subaru Legacy B4, we also have a Subaru Forester TS300, and a Subaru WRX Vag, or VAG. Basically, we're probably going to head into a four-wheel drive Subaru final, which is pretty interesting, I would say, because this is going to be very, very, very similar to the JPT uh, Saloon final. In fact, let's look at the differences right now. So we go into filter, we select all cars, and we go down to miscellaneous so we can look for Japan Pro Tour, which is in the wrong place. It's actually collections and tags. I've been playing this game for how long now? Still don't know where to find it. Japan Pro Tour, and the next thing that we want to look for is the saloon tag, so boom. So we had a final like this, right? And it was basically all Subarus already? So what even the difference at this point what is eliminated i guess the infinity q50 is eliminated the nissan bluebird is eliminated but at the end of the day oh and i guess the nissan m56 or, or sorry the infinity m56 they're all eliminated but i think we're gonna be seeing a lot of repeats over here we're gonna be seeing you know saloon subarus and here's the thing the subaru legacy b4 is considered to be a saloon um, so, I don't know, man. I really don't know. Is it going to be a Subaru four-wheel drive final? What's the situation we're looking at over here? If it is just Subarus and it's just Saloon, um, then maybe we can go into manufacture and let's look for a Subarus right now. I mean, yeah, we get rid of 27, I guess. Okay, so this is what we got. Maybe? No, it's not going to be Saloons. Never mind, because their estates being um, awarded. So, if you get rid of Saloon, then this is really all you have. <laughs> The legendary is still there. It still counts, but then I guess what even is added? I guess you get the hot hatchbacks. A lot of people are gonna have this one because it was Year of the Tiger, um, and I feel like yeah, the Subaru Impreza Cosworth might be a key card for this situation. I don't know, man. That being said, though, let us continue with the whole Subaru speculation, okay? Because here are the prelim prizes. As you can see, for the first three ranks, you're getting a Subaru Impreza WRX GDD, followed by a Tribeca. Just, you know, you know what? It's just good fuse material. It's epic fuse material. That's all I see it as, but they are really giving out a Tribeca for the top 10. Uh, we also have a Subaru Forester, a BRZ, and a Subaru Exica crossover. Now, one thing that I find quite interesting is that three of these cars have of all surface tires so are there going to be any off-road track sets i mean that would make some sense but then again the only useful car is will be the super forester xt hey guess what it's two-tone so i'm um, really looking forward to getting this now if there's going to be any off-road in this final the super forester xt is probably going to be one of the best key cars in the game because there are not a lot of off-roaders here i mean if we go into tires real quick we go into off-road and all surface this is what we got going on so first of all this is a price cut so this doesn't count. So then you're left off with the Subaru XT, the Forester S Edition, the Outback. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. If they're giving, because they're giving away the XV in the in the qualifiers, and then they're giving away the Exiga, the Forester, and the Tribeca. Why would they just give away four all surface tire cars like that? But then again, you know, take this information with a grain of salt. If anything, there might just be one or two off road track sets, and then everything else is going to be dry. So don't get too bogged down or hung up with you know not having the Epic or anything like that. Um, but yeah, moving on. On now let's jump into the qualifiers so Porsche 911 GT1 qualifiers let's see how far I can go obviously when it comes to the tri-series I'm always aiming for top 10 this is the first hand I'm gonna run with I might adapt to it in the future and adapt to the bracket but I'm gonna be running an Alpha 164 uh, Alantia LC2 Alantia Delta HF the Fiat 124 and of course the a bar 131 so let's get into it let's see what we got now all I know is that I'm only allowed to use two slick tire cars because on every track set i do believe there are two rain track sets uh, and one off-road track set so hopefully 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 a lot of my wins are going to be coming from the slick tire boys what i've realized is usually when it comes to italian events i tend to use my lancer lc2 quite a bit which makes me think oh maybe i should put an upgrade into it maybe that should be a worthy investment i'm not sure if it will be a worthy investment but i'm thinking about it i'm thinking about it um all right let's see race number two we also have a one mile all right there's a duplicate tracks on this one isn't it uh the good thing about owning both the 164 and the lc2 since the 164 got a buff is that i can use this is a drag car but I don't need to so like as, as you see on the first race I had the 164 on the one mile but now I have the LC2 
really doesn't matter because the 164 is just a better car in every regard so i'll just see where i can use it you know what i mean i should probably find a way to use the lancia 037 huh i mean now that i actually have the lancia 037 max the right configuration as well maybe i should find a way to squeeze that in um i don't know maybe that could be my three win conditions i kind of like the hand that i'm running with right now though i'll stick with this uh, but I do have a, I have an inclination that a lot of people might use Lancia 037. It might be quite hard to use if you want to use two legendaries, like in my case. So we'll see how it goes. All right, let's go with race uh, number three. Did I see a bunch of rain? No, this is just the track set with a bunch of drinks. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna put you in the karting circuit. You're gonna go in the rally cross. Um, the problem here is I am actually gonna put a Lancia Delta HF all-wheel drive on the one mile against a freaking beast in the Thanos Countach. But there's no way in hell I'm putting. There's just no way in hell I'm putting the slick tire cars in the rain. I know it's a one mile and I'll probably still win, but I won't be winning by too many points. Probably just by 50. And even then, I'm not sure. Really not sure, to be honest. Really risky stuff. But we do still get two stars and a 3-0. I'm going to stick with this hand until I lose. All I'll say is that I'll stick with this hand until I lose. I'm already in the fifth position, so let's see what the top hands are running. Um, okay, so we got the LC2. So this guy is running more of a balanced hand i would say not bad though not bad at all um i could probably just run my 164 then run an 037 and just run like a handful of balanced cars i feel like that might be a pretty good option as well should i try and race him i don't think so i'll go with this one first just in case I, the balance hand might be better i don't know we'll see uh so i'll put you in the one i'll put you in a twisty uh once again i'll put you on the twisty road it looks like everyone is genuinely running the 037 so i am gonna switch it up i think um i'll just run the 164 so my alpha 164 is basically gonna take the role of team captain and then just four like decent cars along with it should be pretty good i would say um so yeah i'm 4 0 right now which i'm feeling pretty good with but let's change it up let's see if we can make an even stronger hand i don't know if this is a stronger hand per se but we'll see so we'll get rid of the legendary that gives us 54 54 53 right now what we need to remember is that we kind of need like a, a pretty good dragster um because there is like that one one mile in the rain that you probably want to use. The SV might be pretty decent if I use the Integrale as well. And ooh, that's not going to fit. 49. 49 drags here. Okay, can I run the Mira? Would you think that this is the better hand? I don't know, really. Um, maybe I'll get rid of this Delta and I'll use the Sports Spider. That gives me 64 RQ. Bit overkill, not gonna lie. If I could run a 70, oh my god, the SVJ that would have been a pretty good hand, I would say. 52 though, I don't have a four wheel drive, but 54 over here. Ooh, yeah, that's gonna cut, that's a bit too close for my liking. Okay, so I'll run the Delta Integrale. No, sorry, I'll run the Stradale. And then, yeah, it gives us the 64. Um, for the dragster, I guess the Di Tommaso is pretty good. Uh, it doesn't have the MRA, but then again, are there two drags on every track set? I don't think there are. Yeah, see, over here there isn't. Okay, so now let's go back to... Oh, okay, so this guy's running two legendaries. So now I don't know why I should run it. Oh, he's running two legendaries and... Oh, the ECB would have been really good for this, wouldn't it? Because he saved so much from this. Because when you think about it, this is 10 RQ cheaper than the LC2. If I was running the LC2, which means that he can run the by turbo, which is 37. And if I was in his position, if I was running the same thing, but this was an LC2, I would have to run a 27 over here. And there are not a lot of Italian 27 standard tire cars out there that can get you a lot of value. So pretty interesting stuff. Um, can we beat this hand now, though? That's the interesting thing. It's going to be three... Ooh, you know, running two 037s is a pretty big brain move, not gonna lie. Really, really good hand still. I think I'll stick with this then. So, let's continue. But I think that I do feel a bit stronger using just one legend and four competent cars. We'll see, we'll see. Um, so... Because we haven't really lost yet. So we're going to have a draw and a win with these two that you see over here. Um, maybe I should... No, I shouldn't run the 030. No, I really sh I don't think I should. Uh, hairpin? I'll put you on Hairpin. Put you on Twisty. So I see two win conditions, two loses, 
But I, uh, but I do win this by a lot of points. Yeah, like 170. So that's gonna be fine. Yeah, I lost twice. I expected that. But like I said, you win a lot of points on that initial one mile. So I feel good about that. Five and zero, but this is an incredibly new bracket. Literally 34 out of 30, uh, 300. What was that, 10% full? So yeah, I'm not gonna count my eggs just yet. But anyway, guys, that's gonna be it today. Let me know down in the comments below if you are excited for the Porsche 911 GT1 race car or not. I I missed it out the first time this is obviously a rerun i would love to get it i am a huge porsche fan after all um so it would be nice to get it on the rerun but anyway guys let me know down in the comments below what you think the requirements will finally be but i hope you guys have a great day i'm gonna stay safe wash your hands and blossom out peace <laughs>